is happening. So it's just a spirit. Eh? New spirit of lust, you live here. Eh? Tell never God's will for your life. You must discover it. So Jesus did not mind. He said, you guys, you will do what I'm doing. You will even do greater than what I'm doing. Which leader have you had anywhere who speaks like this? Anywhere. Some of you have gone to many churches. You watch TV. Which man of God have you had who is selfless like Jesus? Who is willing to say, my son, I'm not jealous of your gift, but I'm going to help you raise you. I'm going to help you to become a great man of God. Where are such men of God today who will not be jealous of their sons when God is raising them? You are quiet. You are quiet. This was a man who was selfless, who was not threatened. When another man of God is raised, when another man of God is used mightily, he never said, no, that one is not a man of God. Why? Because he's being used mightily, greatly. Today it's a problem to be used mightily by God. In fact, I always teasingly say to people, don't pray to be used mightily because criticism will come. People will try to destroy you. Why? Because God is using you mightily. Many of you, you are praying, God use me mightily. But are you ready for criticism? I'm talking about when everyone is against you, including inside the church, including your brothers and sisters, those who are praying for you, that God use him mightily. When God starts using you mightily, the same people who are praying for you are the ones who are going to have a problem. This is a problem today in the body of Christ. When you're not known everywhere, they don't criticize you, but they start criticizing you. When God begins to use you mightily, when God begins to raise you mightily, raise you higher, they start criticizing you. They start fighting you. This is what is happening, Basalo. You see, right now you love me. All is well. You don't know where I come from. But the journey is, has not stopped yet. The Lord is still taking me somewhere. And I'm ready for criticism. This is one thing I've trained myself. I've prepared myself for criticism. Because I know the minute God raises you up, raises you higher, makes you powerful, gives you a lot of money, start driving great cars, big cars, living in big houses, people start criticizing you. This is what you need to be ready as a child of God. Jesus was not, was not disturbed or perturbed by how others are used. He said God will use you greater than me. That them shall be. He said God will use you prophetically greater than me. He said God will use you to touch people, to heal people greater than me. That's what he said. These are kind of leaders we need today. People who are not going to have a problem with God using you mightily. People who are not going to have a problem. Who pray for you when God reveals something about you that God is going to use you. We need such leaders. Amen. I say we need such leaders. Amen. Leaders who will anoint you, who pray for you when God speaks to you about those that are following you and never edit the prophecy never cut it never alter it and 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 do what god is telling you and pray for the children of god make sure that you release what god has given to you to them those are the kind of leaders we need today jesus was never a jealous leader he said god is gonna use you you are going to do what i do so i don't have a problem if you do even better than me Are you there, Pastor Lord? Yes. Jesus was aware of the will of God for his life. He knew why he was here. 
And that's why it didn't have a problem. The problem we have today as leaders is that we don't know the will of God for our ministries. If you knew what God wants you to do, wants to do through you, you would not have a problem with how he uses others. We have a problem because we do not know what God wants us to do. And so because of that, we then have a problem with you. I repeat again. When you know God brought you here to do cakes, scones, not maguinha, you will not have a problem with the one who's selling maguinha. But now you have the, a problem with the one who's selling maguinha because you also think you are supposed to sell maguinha. I repeat again. The problem we have jealous over each other is because we do not know what we are here to do. Amen. We don't know the will of God for your life, for your marriage, for your business. You don't know why God said marry this woman. You don't know why God wanted you to have five children. You don't know. And so you look at others. And then you have jealous because they have two children. And you have five children. You have jealous because they have five children. You have one child. And yet if you knew that the will of God is for you to have one child, you would not have a problem with anybody who is having five children. So Jesus knew exactly why he was born. Why he came. He knew exactly why he was here. And that's why he didn't have a problem. And so the Lord is saying to us, all of us, in the year 2019, Amen. the main thing that we need to seek for Amen. is to find out his will for our lives. Amen. That is the main thing. Write it down. The Lord wants us to know because this is a problem. He's receiving many prayers of people. Prayers they are not supposed to be praying. He cannot answer prayers that are not in the will, in his will for your life. He can't give you that thing that is going to make you opposite of what you're supposed to be. He cannot give it to you. He can't give you that car because your friend is driving the same car. He can't give you a 10,000 seater church because your friends have 8,000 seater church. He can't give you anything that is not in his will for your life. And so he says, many people are busy praying prayers that he is not prepared to answer. And so he says to all of us as his children, in the next coming year, he says, we should, we should seek for his will. Find out what the will of God is for our lives. When you know the will of God for your life, you will start enjoying life. The reason you are not enjoying life is because you don't know. What you are here to do. And you are busy doing things. And that's why you are failing in doing those things. Because it's not what you are supposed to be doing. As a child of God you cannot fail. Doing what God has called you to do. You can't fail. We fail because it's not what we are supposed to do. Yes. Just because the man of God is praying for people. Who are walking in wheelchairs. You also advertise. You want people to come on wheelchairs because man of God is also doing the same thing. That's why you are failing. Because the one who calls the wheelchairs is the one who will heal the wheelchairs. Yes. But if you are calling the wheelchairs then you must heal them. I repeat again. A child of God cannot fail in what God has called them to do. If God wants you to be a doctor you will be a successful doctor. Yes you will have challenges. You will have setbacks and everything. But the Lord will be with you all the way. He will take you through every challenge. He will be there with you. Joseph, yes he was called to the palace. But look at how he got to the palace. But the Lord was with him. Satan tried to stop him. Are you with me, Pastor Lord? So if God has called you to be a doctor, you will be a successful doctor. If God has called you to be a teacher, you will be a successful teacher. But if he has called you to be a teacher and you find yourself because you are clever and then you find yourself doing a, a medicine, you want to be a doctor, you will struggle in life. You will struggle. That's why we are struggling in life. Because we are married to the wrong women. Married to the wrong men. Going to the wrong churches. Reading wrong verses. Praying wrong prayers. 
giving things you're not supposed to be giving. We are doing things you're not supposed to be doing in life. And that's why we are struggling in life. And so the Lord says, He wants us, Basalwan, to discover the will of God for our lives, each one of us. Discover why you married that man. So that you don't, don't chase that man away from your home. If you knew why you married him, you will stay there even when there are challenges. Because God will renew your strength. Amen. But if you don't know, you will leave. If you don't know, you will not stay. That's why we have many pastors who have stopped preaching. Who have closed their churches. Because they don't know, they are frustrated. They are doing things they are not supposed to be doing. They watch TV and they think this is what I can do. It's not a matter of what you can do. It's what God wants you to do. Yes. Don't use your talent to do the, the, the work of God. Yes. Just because you can play soccer does not mean you must be a soccer player. Yes. Just because you can sing does not mean you should record a CD. Yes. That's why you are frustrated because you don't know what you're supposed to do with that voice. Yes. Hey. As children of God, it is our responsibility. To discover. It is not God's responsibility. It is your responsibility. To discover what you are here for. God's will for your life. Tell him about God's will for your life. You must discover it. 